the girls on tiktok are saying the harder the wig the softer the life i got myself a hard wig let's try it out and rate it one through ten Hi everyone and welcome back to Ari Says Stuff. And just a disclaimer, if I sound like I've been hit by a train, I feel like I've been hit by a train. I'm currently sick so I sound kind of nasally and like I have a stuffed voice so don't mind that. But like I said in the intro, today we're going to be talking about the hard wig soft life theory. Basically, the bad wig theory. What? Girl! So I don't know if y'all have been hearing about this theory at all on social media, but it's personally been cracking me up. Welcome to today's episode of Hard Wig Soft Life, where I, your host Ruthie, teach you the ways of attracting a billionaire. Step number one, honey, if the wig is on your hairline, wrong, push it back and up. Higher, higher ladies, higher. The higher the wig, the higher the income. Earn it. Move the hair forward. Take pieces. Twist them. Twist them quickly. Quickly, faster. Oh, if you're black, nothing for you. But if you're white, there's something for you. And the So if you're still confused about what the bad wig theory is, that's completely fair because there's no real definition or scientific research behind this theory. I think it's something that people have like talked about and like thought about for years, but there's never really been such a defined like name to this theory or this idea. But if I had to come up with my own personal definition of what the bad wig theory would be, it would basically be the messier the wig or braids or hairstyle in general it's not just wigs but this theory tends to focus on wigs but the messier a black woman's hair is the more likely she is to attract a white man with a lot of money or just a white man in general and another layer of this that people have spoken about is being thin also attributes to this which I do think does play a huge role in it. But from what I've seen personally, black women of all different sizes are able to pull this off. It's just that slimmer women are more likely to attract the white men that have a lot of money and affluence, if that makes sense. So what even is a bad wig? What does it mean for a wig to be bad versus a wig to be laid? Now I'm no wig expert, or hair ex expert. And how long you been doing hair? Um, for like three years. Yeah, that's cute. Can you turn around for me? Yeah. But I do have eyes and I am on social media a lot. So I can give you some examples of what a good wig versus a bad wig would be, according to the internet. So these would be some examples of good wigs. Basically, a good wig means that you've put time, effort, and energy into making the wig look like it's as realistic as possible. So this can include baby hairs. It doesn't always have to include baby hairs, but as you can see here, the term what lace would definitely be in reference to this wig right here. What lace? What lace? Oh! <coughs> Oh, the one that is literally not there? Cause yeah, there's not a lace. There's not a lace, baby, no lace. This is ooh, 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 my head. Now, these would be some examples of a quote unquote bad wig. This is all subjective, but basically a bad wig is a wig that looks like you kind of just threw it on your head. You didn't really put too much time or effort into it, maybe because you were running late, or this is just typically how you wear your wigs. They also tend to be maybe a little bit more 
matted sometimes just depending on the wig the cut isn't always there and something about it to other black people specifically other black women just looks a little bit off about it and like i mentioned again this is all subjective and of course the honorable mentions would be messy braids and just overall messy hair in general I think that one big reason why this topic is so fascinating to so many people is that for the black women with the bad wigs or messy braids or whatever that do happen to have these white partners that have a ton of money I guess it's like if you have so much access to money and to resources to really great hairstylists why not spend that money on a good wig or getting somebody to lay your wig so that it looks good like this has to be a personal choice like why you know i only have three hours to get ready it's date night for the malins in kent and iran is halfway through the beauty process today i think he's taking me to uh, one of his nice tiny restaurant somewhere I, I really think it's important for me and sam to have some time together because you know yes we love the kids but i always say the kids grow up and they, they leave they leave the house a key element of keeping the flame alive with five children is the nannies <laughs> i personally don't care i don't care if someone has a bad wig or a laid wig or old braids new braids or their uh, silk press is brand new or maybe the second they walk out the salon it looks like they got electric i don't care but it's still fascinating nonetheless there's a few reasons why people think that this bad wig theory is a thing why people think that having a bad wig or a messy haired look attracts white men and sometimes white men with money one of those reasons would be because the black women that don't necessarily put a ton of effort into their hair are less intimidating to this men. A lot of people think that when these white men see the black women who do have their hair super laid and their hair super put together, that it can be intimidating for them to want to approach them and go and talk to them. They may even think that these black women may be more high maintenance, they may want more from them, and also a really big key factor is they may be more in touch with their black culture. A TikToker I saw, and I'm going to insert her video here in just a second, um, but she basically was saying that those people that represent black culture, at least black culture on like social media, they tend to have their hair a certain way. When we think about uh, those celebrities or those like black influencers or I think another example she used was like the rappers like baby mamas or whatever I don't know but a lot of these black women that they look great by the way tend to really prioritize making sure their hair is really laid their makeup is done perfectly and they tend to always look really good or be putting towards a lot of money and effort to look good I'm gonna explain as I take my braids out, but I realize that the reason that white men are more attracted to black women when they have bad weaves and bad wigs is because the worse your wig is, the stiffer it is, most likely the more disconnected you are with black culture. And really think about it. Like think about every rapper you know that has a really, really good wig. Like think about Cardi B, all those girls. They are very much a representation of hip hop culture and they're very much a representation of what people think black culture is. We know as black people that that is not really black culture. Like it's very diverse. We have a lot in our humor, everything. It's a lot. To a lot of white men, this can be super duper intimidating, which is a, an issue on their own. That's their own issue. But this is a reason why some people think that this theory might be true. Another reason why they think these white men are more attracted to black women with the bad wigs is because they don't really know what our hair is supposed to look like. Unless you are black yourself or you grew, grew, or you grew up around a lot of black people immersed in black culture for a long time, you probably won't really know much about it. You probably won't really know what a black woman's hair looks like when it looks good or when her wig is laid or not laid 
to you you just see hair a lot of them don't even know that it's a wig a lot of them will completely see lace and not even think twice about it they don't really know what they're looking at for a lot of them for most of them really so when they see a black woman with a bad wig they're not turned off by it or they don't feel some type of type of way about it the way maybe a black man might notice it more he's grown up seeing his mom his sisters his aunts maybe previous partners do their hair and has seen them up close and personal and knows what a good wig looks like whereas a white man or a non-black man in general won't really know or care about that another reason why people might think that white men are attracted to this these bad wigs is because to some white men these black women and this kind of also ties into like the intimidation thing but they may see these black women as just being carefree not caring too much about their appearance as we know some men do get uncomfortable when women care too much about their appearance the way that they look and so to these white men this type of black woman may be more approachable to them and may seem how do i say that? like easier to deal with or um just more like carefree less uptight which i'm not saying this is true at all these are just reasons why people think these white men go after these particular black women or what is going through these white men's males heads if that makes sense it does make sense and also a good point that someone made is that a lot of times a lot of these black women that have bad wigs aren't necessarily without money like on their own a lot of them may have really good jobs they have money they have access they just don't really care and a lot of times they also have like expensive taste when it comes to other things so the black woman that has the bad wig or whatever because she has expensive taste and lives a certain lifestyle already she kind of integrates into like this wealthy white man's lifestyle already a lot of them they tend to have um expensive taste outside of you know the headpiece and they tend to fit right into their world just having a good time is all that they want and a lot of women whose wigs are like this they don't care they don't think too hard about it they're just enjoying life and that's what these men want someone to enjoy life with and if we're looking at the part of this theory where people think that the black women who do have the bad wigs are more disconnected from that black culture a little bit it would kind of make sense because if this is the case then they're probably already in majority white spaces so statistically it would make sense if she ended up with a white man if that's all she's around and also it might be just what she wants there's so many reasons why this theory could be a thing and i think it's multifaceted like every theory under the sun i think that every situation every bad wig white man situation is different they got together for different reasons and i think that all the things that i mentioned can be true for different people or maybe all can be true for one person who knows this is all just fun and games let's not take this too seriously it's just a funny little theory people are talking about on social media so i want to play a little game i'm going to put a picture of a black woman on the screen and i want y'all to guess if she's married to a white man or a black man number one what do you think if you guessed white husband you are correct all right next one if you guessed white husband you are correct again last but not least and if you guessed white husband again you are correct how many did y'all get correct Leave it in the comments below. Tell the truth. For some of y'all, that might have been easy because y'all might already know who some of these people are. But for those of you that didn't know, basically the whole point of that quiz was to show that all of these black women are married to white men, yet their hairstyles look different. They carry themselves in different ways. And at the end of the day, there's always exceptions to the rule. So although sometimes we might be scrolling through social media and we can see black women that maybe wear their hair a certain way, you may be like, I just know her husband is white. 
Matter of fact, I've been on black women's videos and I click the comments and everyone in the comments is saying, I bet you're married to a white man. I bet you're married to a white man. And you go on her page, scroll down a little bit and she's not right. And it's all based off of the way her hair looks. Or there's some black women who always have super laid wigs. Their hair always looks good and they are with white men. So you really don't know. There's always an exception to the rule. For example, Eve, if we look at Eve, you may not always be able to tell immediately that she's married to a white man unless you know that she's married to a white man already. She has had moments where, you know, the wig was wigging, but wigs wig sometimes. Like, be nice, okay? And then there's other moments where her hair is laid and she looks amazing. Majority of the time she looks amazing. P people just have bad hair days, we all do. So you can't necessarily tell if someone is married to a white man automatically just by looking at them. So what do y'all think about this? Do y'all think that the bad wig theory is real? And if so, I really wanna hear y'all's opinions. I feel like a lot of people are gonna just say like, you know, it can go either way, like it's whatever. But I know there's a lot of people that are very passionate about this theory that really believe that it's real. And to some extent I do too. I think that it's super nuanced. It can really go either way, but I do think that like there are some things within the theory that are not coincidental, but then there's some things that like are. What do y'all think? Leave it in the comment section below. I want to thank you guys for watching today's video and making it to the end. And I also want to thank everyone that has been subscribing to my channel recently. I've only posted, I think three videos so far and I already have like 600 subs and I already have 600 subscribers and I'm really thankful for that. I just want to thank you guys again for showing my support and like subscribing to my channel. It makes me feel really, really good because this is like all like really new to me and I don't completely know what I'm doing. So it makes me feel good that I am making something that people are enjoying and resonating with. Yeah, I just again wanted to thank everyone. And if you aren't subscribed, I would really love it if you could subscribe down below. Or is it over here? I don't know. I'll wait. And also, if you could follow me on my social media, I don't post anything on Instagram at this point. I really don't. But I do post on TikTok. So if you want to follow me on TikTok, you know. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like TikTok feels more personal. No, I think actually YouTube feels more personal. I think t YouTube feels more personal because it's like a longer form of content where TikTok is tic TikTok where TikTok is just like quick, you know what I mean? You're just scroll, scrolling past. But yeah, I'm done rambling now. Well, I hope you all have a wonderful day or wonderful night, depending on where you are. And again, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.